יאן, כמוסה ראי ג'אן, מה אחר מתה? אלם חון, אמי שנאמן אחו, אימא גם גמור מריטה סנאמן טיינן, מאג'ו סובסטנטיב, מאג'ו מיילמן, יאן. אז אתם יכולים לראות, מייבו אייס מאג'ו פגוד נתאי, בומבא תאי, בומליק תאי סמי נילה, מאג'ו דרייבר בוי תאי תודי. Yes, pag-usapan natin, balikan natin itong isyu ng agrikultura, isyu ng uh, Bombo Marcos as agriculture secretary, what we should do with the agricultural sector. Interview ko with uh, Secretary Balisakan, you'll get uh, to see a copy of that. Soon also, of course, you'll have, very soon, uh, you'll also have, you interview namin ni uh, incoming National Security Advisor, uh, Clarita Carlos. So don't worry about that, guys. Parating na mga yan. Ayan, kanina kailangan na bumalik dito sa Maynila dahil meron tayong talk dyan sa, uh, sa UP. No? At may kasama tayong kaibigan tayo na dumating, uh, Professor Blaxland, a good friend of mine uh, from Australia. Ka- uh, medyo parati kami kasama dati sa Australia. Ano, nandun ako sa Australia before. Alam niyo naman, medyo, alam niyo naman, mga ex-girlfriend nandun sa Australia. Puno ako Australia, so nandun kasi university, mga ganun. Okay, maraming drama. All right. No, there was no drama. No, anyway, and dito yung kaibigan natin. So we had uh, we had fantastic conversation and discussion. Thank you, thanks and shout out Jan once mga kaibigan natin in uh, UP Asian Center for arranging a fantastic conversation. So medyo puyat talaga tayo kasi we had to drive through the night and then ayan tapos hagad meeting, talks, talks, etc., etc. Kanina medyo nagpahinga tayo ng konti, power nap lang. Ayan, tapos uh, nahabol din natin itong Zelensky style shirt natin. No? Yan. So thank you rin sa mga friends natin dyan sa Baguio. I had a fantastic time. Salamat sa aking pamilya, sa La, Faro, La Foronda, uh, La Familia, La Foronda. Yan. For give us a, giving us some time. Medyo nag-yellow trail din tayo. That was fun. Of course, alam ko, inahanap niyo si Picasso. But I'm sorry, Picasso is not currently available. Kulang daw minigayin yung stars. Ayan, ayan tayo dyan, ayan, tayo, ayan tayo dyan, guys. Uh, Nag-audience capture yan si, si, ano, si, pangalan niya, si Picasso. So, kanina, kakalculate ako, okay, ito yung mga stars na kuha niya. Ito, kulang pa, bago natin mabili yung gusto kong shirt sa kanya. Parang ganda ng jacket na black sa kanya, na. Uh, cute overload, Picasso! Don't worry, next time, dapat medyo pag nag-walk kami ni Picasso, ng life tayo, ganda tayo ng feeling vlogger. Alright? Oh, medyo magandang balance yan kay Picasso boy. Malapit na yung number of stars kay Picasso. Pwede na tayo bumili ng ano sa kanya. Medyo ano, mga kameta. Hindi team replay ngayon ha. Oh, by the way, di ba sabi natin dyan sa mga subscription, yung mga gustong tao mag-subscribe, uh, please go ahead for a single month. Yung subscription niya is just for a single Starbucks coffee. At aminin ko na kapag totoong Starbucks coffee na hindi train one ng isang araw, gamit ang... Gift certificate. At nakisama pa yung isang cousin natin. Ilocano style. Ayan niya, met. Kasta, met. Yan. So, match Kaya nga kapon, wala nang tulugan dahil nag-ano tayo. Nag-cafe tayo ng totoong Starbucks ng 9.10pm. Wala. Gising hanggang 7.8am, no? Konting tulog. Boom. Go meeting. UP. Talk. Blah, blah, blah. Go around. Kaya konting pahinga kanina and then catch up tayo guys ngayon ha. Kamusta kayo dyan guys? So thank you naman para by the way sa aking very good friend. Uh, uh, also from UP, also from Baguio. Uh, and yeah, when, and abroad si Christine Woods. Thank you very much for the plants na binigay sa akin. At medyo makapal ang mukha ko ako yung pisita na ininvita mo na napakataas ng respeto mo sa kanya. And after a few days... Ay, punta ako dyan sa bahay mo. Nagsa-self-invite. Dahil, yun nga, magpipig up ng free plans. Kaya thank you dyan kay Christina Wood for uh, being my new favorite kabalahura. <laughs> Nasakyan natin yung balahura. Nay, nay, nay. Ang, ganda ng, ang ganda talaga ng bahay na itong kaibigan natin si Christina. Which has this fantastic, beautiful palang, parang glass house, beautiful plants, etc. Medyo mahilig ako sa plants. We just have a humble apartment here, but at least I make sure that we have enough plants and all. Siyempre, laking bagyo. I grew up with pine trees and plants and everything, and then the sayote of Lola and everything around me. So, siempre having a little bit of, uh, you know, a few kind of uh, bamboo, etc. Again, uh, gives me some some joy and relaxation. At ang kapag yellow trail din tayo, oh yellow, ah, wala pink pink lawan trail. Don't tayo sa Baguio. So, 
I got to see some beautiful morning na hindi kailangan ng magbayad ng aircon, na fresh morning, etc. So I'm very, very grateful. Nakapag-interview din tayo sa mga kaibigan natin sa incoming administration, of course, two cabinet secretaries, including my former professor, Ma'am Carlos. Uh, please, uh, please, abangan niya yan. There will be different versions of that coming out soon. So please, we had very extensive, very cordial conversation. Uh, hindi ang bardagula na very respectful naman kami. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, I'm a pro. You put me there, I'm gonna do my job. I interviewed prime ministers, I've interviewed uh, cabinet ministers, I've interviewed, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, okay. Uh, and it's all, you know, it's always something to, to also talk to former professors and all. As I said, we may have had disagreements throughout the years and all. I will, you know, still, you know, point out if there are any shortcomings by any administration. But at the same time, let's see, let's have a proper conversation. Pinagusapan namin ng critical engagement, calibrated engagement with China. In fact, it seems she really liked the term that I used to calibrated engagement. Also, discussions on neutrality on Russia. The term I used was navigating it. She very much also agree with me. So, you know, so I'm glad that we are having an opportunity to in- interact. Now, before we go to that, soon you'll have an idea of well, maybe a one-hour long interview. Let's go back to the issue of economy. No? Pero, bago natin balikan ng itong, itong issue ng ekonomiya, kaya nga tayo nag-green na ganyan, syempre, lodi din natin si Zelensky, mga matapang na leaders na bata. Kunin, tignan naman natin yung mga latest developments. Ano ko yung mga iba sa, sa akin? Bakit parang dahil mong dinidiscuss? Come on, guys. Kasi hindi naman tayo university style na... Even in the university, you know, sometimes when professors give lecture, I mean, at least ito yung experience ko sa UP, no? Uh, Diliman is... You kind of start with something that people can relate to, maybe some latest... Uh, events, current affairs events, and then from there you build up. Uy, what? May mga talagang mabait tayong friends dyan. Ah. Kay Milagros Casanova, thank you very much for your starts and support. Ayan na, talagang mabait talaga mga kaibigan natin dyan. Now, so going back to this, guys, I have my own heuristic approach. No? So, you, you got, so as I said, there's a Socratic method, there's the Aristotelian method. The Socratic method, or Platonic method for that matter, meron kang big question, so a moderate question. Like, for instance, what is love? What is truth? What is justice? Right? So you can start with that, right? And then you go deductive, right? Uh, and then there's the inductive approach, more Aristotelian, which is you start with something that people are familiar with, uh, something that major current affairs event, etc. And then from there you build up big arguments, right? So sometimes I go Aristotelian, sometimes I go Socratic, depending on the situation and ground. But but I also use the term and, and I want you guys to also learn this term. So the two things that I always I keep in mind is two kinds of analysis, guys. Even mentiel, so this is French, sorry, and long, ju- long jury, jury. Okay, may I make it a little bit French? Uh, even mentiel. So I'm using uh, the the French historical school. Sila Fernand Brodel. No, okay. So, so. I'm just explaining to you guys, hindi ako out of nowhere. Everything I do, there's a process to it. There's a training to it. There's a, there's a backstage to it. So, I tell you, this is how you, you write it. Uh, event mentiel, all right? So, I tell you, event mentiel, right? Event mentiel, okay, le français. So, event mentiel uh, comes from uh, événement, uh, which means event, occurrence, occasion, happening, etc. So, what does it mean? Yung latest media, de- latest developments, like ito yung nangyari, may nagbardagula, may nagganan. So you can start with even, even metiel and then you can look at what you call uh, long jury uh, analysis. So you look at long-term analysis of certain trends. Again, uh, hindi lingerie because there was time I had an interview with uh, one of the big think tanks in the US and I was doing this analysis of what factors contributed to the rise of Duterte and I said, you have to have long jury analysis and I said, and biglang, nakita ko doon, yes, Annal School of History, that's true. Uh, so, Bernard Fraudel, among others. The long jury, uh, what they also look at is the long... T- so, doon nakita ko sa transcription, nakalagay lingerie. Hindi po lingerie. Ang ano, long jury. Okay, so I'll, let me... Parang long duration, parang long-term analysis. Okay? Yung po yung ginagamit natin. So, I always look at long-term analysis. Okay? So, this is how... So, long jury. So, this is according to Oxford. You know, long jury. Okay, so, uh, long duration, right? So, you look at long-term structural trends that lead to certain developments, right? Uh, for instance, what factors contribute to the rise of industrial revolution, etc. What factors contribute to the rise of, I don't know, uh, etc. revolution or, or to the return of the markets. So, you always combine that. You always combine that. You have Inventment TL 
and Lost Rui. Now, the thing is, as you may know, I have multiple hats. Uh, I teach in the university. I'm, a, I'm, I'm very proud to be a, a teacher. Uh, I have had many great students. May makonting pasaway jan, may konting drama, so I have had to deal with them. Isn't it a stress? And daming mga gawin, may madrama nga. Uh, but I love, I love teaching. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's an experience that, uh, that grounds you, that tells you about compassion and understanding. Because teaching is a process of really interacting with another consciousness, right? And the process of imparting not only knowledge. Knowledge is easy. You can just download it anywhere. But passion for philosophy, uh, passion for knowledge, right? Sophia, no? Philosophia, right? So that kind of sophic interaction, that's, that's very, very important to me. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also a journalist. I mean, I'm not journalist in the sense na nag-aral ng journalism sa eskwela. Uh, hindi naman sa sense na, uh, you know, anchor sa TV, etc. Although that could have been a line for me. It's just not something I'm looking at. I've done co-anchoring. I did co-anchoring with Atom Aurelio dun sa show namin na uh, Stand for Truth. At least until the pandemic, I ever disrupted everything. But uh, I'm journalist in the sense that I'm a columnist, right? Uh, so columnists are considered journalists, opinion journalists in that sense. Uh, not reporter, not reporter. So, and of course, now we're a vlogger, na rin tayo, di ba? Um, So, they say journalism is the first draft of history, right? First draft of history. Because don't say journalism is not mo. Ano yung mga nangyari, ano yung mga mahaligang bagay, ano mga kailangan record natin to pass down to the next generation. And then, jan papasok yung second draft, which is jan papasok yung social scientists, historians, political scientists, economists, sociologists, etc. So, I do the first, the first draft and the second draft. So I do the journalism. I do the second draft as an academic. So my parating na tayo na journal article, by the way, but by some very reputable journal article uh, on on the right on the return of the Marcoses. So that was my second draft, and I based the second draft on my first draft analysis. And then doing the journal article, American Event So what were the contingent factors that contributed to success of Marcos? For instance, eto yung kakulangan ng opposition. Eto yung kakulangan ng center. Uh, Lacson. Jim Mars and Nalaxon and, uh, and Isco, for instance. And then, yung alliance nila with Sarah, which for me was the most important contingent factor. And then you go into the structural, long jury, right? You go beyond event you look at the long-term structural factors that allowed for the rise of the markets, right? So you combine those things, guys. That's how you do proper social science political analysis, right? Okay. So anyway, so I'm just explaining to you guys, hindi tayo nagvlogger na out of nowhere, hindi yung, uy, ano yung pinaka mag-engagement today? No, hindi ganon. But at the same time, I understand, we have to start with something that people can relate to, alright? Because I want you guys to appreciate what we're doing here is totally different from anything else you're gonna find online, right? Yes, I mean, of course, due respect to some of our friends, they update their lectures in university, great. We can do that too. You can check my lectures sa Harvard Law School, my uh, lectures at Stanford University, and dyan yan online. Just type my name. Hey, Darian, Stanford, lalabas yan. Hey, Darian, Harvard Law School, lalabas yan. Hey, Darian, I don't know, uh, Australian National University, lalabas yan. So, I have those one hour, two hours, three hours, whatever discussions online. But at the same time, I ko naman yung parang lectures sa classroom. This is quite different. It's, you know, I mean, you can see me like this. It's interactive. There is constant feed. I don't know if feed is in my students, although I can see them reacting, etc. Uh, but it's different. This is a very different. Imagine wild, and then we have sometimes a thousand, up to five thousand people coming in live, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, one million people sometimes watch us on our videos. So it's like, so the so the qual the the quality changes because of the quantity too. So it's a very different dynamic. Anyway, gusto ko lang sa sa inyo na hindi out of nowhere yung mga ginagawa natin. Kasi I, I've I've seen people making comments. Bakit ganyan? Bakit ganyan? Parang, wait lang. Parang, sinong teacher sa atin dalawa? Alright? Uh, and uh, I have my style. Alright? I have my style. I have my approach. Because the first thing we want to do here, guys, is to really elevate yung antas ng diskusyon. At saka to really help people to have more appreciation for high-quality discussions. I know. I mean, pansin ko, guys, eh, kung bardagulan, pag nagpo-post ako ng bardagulan about trolls and all, andali, thousands of reactions, etc. But, Ayoko naman ganyan lang buhay mo, di ba? At ayoko naman bastusin yung page ko na yan. P pinaghirapan ko guys yung page na yan. Hanggang naging ganyan yung page natin na hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of engagement. Hindi naman out of nowhere yan. Di naman ako artista. Di naman ako nag-sexy uh, picture dyan na parang maraming. You know, I don't do any of these things. So, we build these things. Hard work since 2018. 
na troll tayo ng big time in the first year or so. <laughs> but by the second, third year, good luck sa mga trolls. Silang troll dito. It took some time and I fought back very hard against those trolls at first myself. Uh, and then nung nakita nyo, siguro marami sa'yo nakita nyo, palaban tong, ano, I, I made the roar. Ayan na, ngayon. You wanna troll me on my page? Let's go. Let's bring it on. All right? Okay, bardagulan on bardagulan, right? No, because I have to protect the classroom. I have to protect this realm of political discussions we have here. This is our safe zones, guys. This should be our safe zone. So the trolls now are like the spice. They're not poison. They're just spice. They like spice things up, push up my engagement, make me exciting, sarap ipagalita ng ganon. But I made sure there'll not be a poison here because we want to have this kind of safe space for discussion because we deserve it as Filipino people, right? And you're watching me not because I am going to grade you, so hindi kayo napilitan. Hindi naman kayo nagbabayad pumunta dito. Maraming boy, librat boy, ano, tambay. Although pwede naman kayo mag-subscription for the price of a Starbucks. Hindi, actually, there's a way, guys, na maalam nyo na latest. Nakalagay down, parang may, tin- may nag-comment dyan eh, na parang lagay nyo, parang i-favorite nyo yung page or something like that. Parang, oh, ito to, ito daw. Oh. Ito daw. Parang punta kayo sa page ko, tapos lagay nyo dito favorite, ganon. Niyan, sigurado na siguro na kung meron akong sasabi live, lumalabas ako. Kasi ang daming nagreklamo, guys, na hindi nila alam kung nagla-live ako at kaya nagti-team replay versus team live tayo parate. I don't know anong ginawa itong meta. Kasi nung election time, immediately I go in, thousands are tuned in, they, they know I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a live. Ngayon, ang daming sabi, Sir, hindi ko alam, nag-live ka pala kanina, ganyan, ganyan. So, I, there's something they change eh. Kasi dito, nakikita ko yung mga reconfigurations. Ewan ko dito. Eh, lumaki pa nga yung followers natin since election time. Nagdagdag tayo ng, I don't know, 50,000, 60,000 in just the past month alone, right? So, biglang may ginawa silang iba, hindi ko alam. So, please, you can just put that favorite or you can put, I don't know, subscription or whatever. Para sigurado naman na alam niyo kung nag ano, ako eh. Uh, I'm going live. So, you know, I, I'm just trying to explain to you guys what we're trying to do here. Because napansin ko, okay, if it's just information knowledge, you can get that whenever you want, right? If it's just bardagulan, there are always going to be vloggers or trash here. So, doon na lang kayo sa kanila, di ba? I mean, I can do trash talk and all, but come on. Kadiri, nag-aaral tayo na matagal, nagturo tayo, nag-aaral tayo, nag-research tayo, tapos hanggang bardagulan. No, I'm not here. I, you know, it's fun once in a while, but it's not really what I do here, right? Hindi naman habol natin engagement lang dito. Thank God naman marami tayong outlets and platforms, no? Uh, so, hindi naman ako desperado for, for engagement, etc. But at the same time, we don't want to make it boring. Uh, so, talagang iniisip ko eh. I mean, it took me six months to really come up with this framework uh, approach dito sa vlogs natin. And I said, you know what? Let's do something no one has done as far as I know, right? Let's do, let's create a safe zone for proper conversation. Now, I know for a fact, a lot of good friends of ours, they saw my vlogs as almost like therapy uh, over the past month dahil maraming tao, they're trying to wrap their head around ano nangyari sa politika natin, saan tayo pupunta. So yes, I understand that these uh, vlogs have turned out as a therapy for you people. Although, believe me, it's also relaxing to me in a sense that I'm, I'm essentially thinking out loud. Wala naman akong notes eh. I mean, yes, on dito na yung notes. Kung but I mean, my notes are kunyaring notes. I mean, I can talk like this. <laughs> Style ko lang. I'm just showing you how serious I am with you guys. But... Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's a therapy for all of us because, let's be honest, we are not just animals. I mean, we are kind of animals too. We have basic needs and all of that. But we are, we are hyper-conscious, self-conscious animals. So we have certain attributes that makes us completely special. And one of that is our love for philosophy, for proper understanding, for proper discussion, etc. And the idea that you can only have that if nag-aaral ka sa isang magandang skwela or kung nag ka ng ticket para pumasok sa isang concert, kung saan nagsasalita ng ganitong social na high class na TED Talk or whatever. Parang napaka-exclusivist naman yan. And not to mention, I mean, it's one thing to give one great lecture, right? You go and go around. I, I've given lectures in the world's top biggest universities. I mean, uh, and we plan to drop by Oxford University and Cambridge University in near future, God willing, to also discuss my upcoming book on China. The title is Confronting China to be published by Melbourne University Press, God willing. So I haven't been in Oxford and Cambridge for talks and all, but hopefully we'll get there also. But I've given talks in practically every major university you can imagine across the world. I mean, it's great. But, you know, but the, who are going to watch me there? The students there, the professors, etc. It's going to be, the audience is going to be very specialized, right? Uh, and 
As I said, you can give a lecture, one lecture, and then perfect my lecture na yan. Go around the world na. But it's another thing to do vlogs every day. And then vlogs na semi-lecture, semi-sensible. It really disciplines your mind and disciplines also your interaction with your audience. Okay. Nakita yung ginawa ko. It, like, like in 30 minutes, I just explained to you why, what, how I'm explaining things. Di ko pa rin nasimulan yung sasabihin ko. Alright. So, to cut the story short, magsimula tayo dito sa Bardagulan, which is Duterte Youth. Wala. Na-deny sila dito sa... So, na-deny sila dito, ito, 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 Duterte Youth. Na-deny sila dun sa motion nila na makapasok si uh, 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 former commissioner uh, and now representative Rowena Guanzo. No? So, etong eto yung Duterte Youth. Ilang taon na yan? Mas bata pa yata ako dito. Eh. Anyway, parang pwede na rin ako mag-youth party. Ah. Vloggers Youth Party. Yan. Maradagula na tayo. So, the Commission Elections has denied the opposition of the Duterte Youth Party list uh, to a substitution of nominees of P3 PWD party list, uh, specifically former Comelec Commissioner Rowena Guanzon. Of course, some people raise concern because Mom Guanzon was a commissioner and then he, she kind of get got into elections. The so I said, but parang bakit ganon, right? I know there are technicals in discussion there, but I'm, I'm not an election lawyer, so I'm not going to pretend to know something about it. But obviously, some people were saying, parang commissioner ka, tas biglang mamaya, in that commissioner, that party, part of an elections that you were kind of commissioner in and then later you become like ganon, ganon, of that party list, ganon, ganon. But anyway, salam naman natin, si Mang Guanzon was very active also in promoting yung party list na yan. Uh, now, of course, she is a fiery uh, figure. So I'm sure there's some people na, na ruffle yung feathers nila. So pinapush na itong Duterte party list. Na Duterte youth party list. I mean, ito ah, guys ah, Like, w- ano yung... What's it? What's the youth all about? I mean, what are they pushing for exactly? What is going on? I mean, the first time I learned that there are Duterte youth, is that when I was talking about the aerial shot, they were in the Luneta, and then how many were there? Seven? <laughs> I mean, like, come on, what is this all about? I don't understand it. Please explain, okay? Because the seats there in the Congress are sacred, yan, guys, in the sense that Diyan ang dapat lalabas ng boses ng taong bayan. May proseso. So, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, ay, ay, ay. Okay, ayoko na magbardagulan. Tagal na yung introduction natin. Sige na, magpakabayit na ako. Mahirap na. Okay. Basta. So, ano? Ba? May BBM youth na rin? Anong next? So, meron na tayong Duterte youth. Meron na tayong UVIP ba yan? Yung Vloggers Union. Uh, what's next, right? Kaya nga sabi ko, guys, gawa rin tayo ng sarili natin. Party list. Meta party list. Ano pong ano niyo dyan? Ambag niya sa buhay. Ambag party list. Uy, para maganda yun guys sa ambag party list. A tayo so medyo sa dust tayo. Tapos, marami tayong ambag. Magandang wifi, magandang ano, yan. Magandang love life, magandang ano, yan. Basta meta, lahat ng meta. Uy, thank you very much kay Jocelyn Lomberio. Ayan, mga magalante yan, mga supporters natin yan. Thank you very much. I support. Ay, I, I really appreciate your support. May pag-asa na si Picasso magkaroon ng second clothes soon. Alright? So, maraming salamat. I appreciate that. Ako medyo Zelensky lang ako dito. Style na uh, forma. Okay, nasan tayo? No, I mean, sige, maybe one day let's have a proper discussion about party list at yung Supreme Court ruling that paved the way for party list to be like that. You know, tipong big naman na tayong Wi-Fi party list. Ano yung party list ni Mocha Uson? Anong party list ni Mocha Uson? Ano nangyari? Ilan ang boto niya? Ay, ewan ko. Yung, di ba yung... Parang... Ano yung party list niya ulit? Ewan ko. Okay. Now, finally, we have time to transition into the discussion. But, I think we need to wrap up now. Wala, parang ano yun eh? Bar, parang budul, na, nag, nagbudul tayo dito. Binudul ko kayo. Ang daming intro. That was... I, I need to leave na. Bukas na natin ituloy ito. Ginawa kong squid game. Diba kakainis yung mga squid game? Parang, Uy, ano mangyari? Tapos biglang, tapos na yung, tapos na yung episode. Ayan tayo, ayun tayo na naman natin yung next episode. Ayan. Medyo nag-squid game style tayo dito. No, okay, after that very long introduction, let me continue our slash lecture discussion of the agricultural sector yesterday 
as I said, yes, I promise to you, I'll discuss the Phillips curve. So, I think Phillips curve. Okay, medyo may matin na tayo ano. I promise to discuss to you Phillips curve, the relationship between inflation and unemployment, right? Uh, we will we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. Now, the higher the unemployment, uh, you know, as a, uh, the higher unemployment, the tendency is you have lower inflation, and the higher inflation, you tend to have lower unemployment. So, so if you follow the Phillips curve, stagflation is not supposed to happen, and yet it happened. And stagflation is a situation whereby this curve is completely different. So as the unemployment goes lower, actually inflation goes higher. So parang nagbabalik tad tong curve na to. The curve will be different, completely different. It will be reversed, right? Uh, or at least it's not as inverse relationship as this. Of course, if you really plot it, parang nag-increase ng inflation from 2 to 5%, but unemployment did not go down. So the curve could look very different, right? So we can discuss that. Now, my goodness, ang mahal ng gasolina. Uh, malamang, wala naman tayong driver. Ako naman driver. So, and I drive my own car, etc. My good, ang mahal. Grabe, isang libo, guys. Ilang litro lang mga kukuha mo sa kotse. Ano may XCS? Yun ang pinakamura nakita ko. Parang 30, 40 pesos, ganun. Grabe, sa bagyo, mahal ng gasolina. Grabe, uh, nag-uuno na, uno na. Talagang 100 na, almost 93, 94, yung mga high octane gas or diesel. Ang mahal, grabe. Grabe sa bagyo. Kaya mga rich people lang talaga lang pwede mag ano. So yung mga ano natin, cousins natin na nakisaray sa car ko, let me remind you, doble ang gastos ko. <laughs> Gasolina ko, alright? So dapat yung pagmamahal niya sa akin ay lumaki. Grabe! Grabe! May ma- feel mo talaga yung, yung sakit sa bulsa talaga yun. Grabe! Yung magawa mo ng 1.5, 2K. Ngayon, 4K. I mean, it's crazy. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Kaya... Oh my goodness. Kaya ngayon si Biden na gano eh. Sa US, they have suspended federal tax uh, para bumaba yung presyo ng gasolina. Let's see what the, this, our government is gonna do. Right? Wala naman yung ginagawa si Tatay Digong. So tignan natin si Bongbong Marcos anong gagawin niya dyan. Baka we can suspend VAT taxes, etc. We can suspend, I don't know, we can have stricter regulation of the energy markets kasi hindi rin natin alam ano ba talaga yung computations na ginagamit nila. Eh. Yung ibababa ng piso tapos 4 piso up. And by the way, nalaman ko nung ano, nung 2 months ago, house up ko yung isang Grab driver. O kasi minsan kung pagod talaga ako mag-drive, nag-grab na lang ako. Kasi ang mahal din ng Grab eh. Um, sabi nung driver, meron daw app na kung saan pwede ka bumili ng kota. Tapos kunyari sa current prices pang kain stock market. And then pwede mo siya i-consume later on in specified uh, gas stations. So kunyari, uh, alam ko there's high chance na tataas ang gasolina naman in 2 weeks. Ngayon pa lang, bibili ako ng, let's say, 50 liters. And then, pwede ko i-consume at the current price ng 50 liters later on. So, I'm, so ang term dyan, hedging, right? It's the term in, in stock markets and economics. You hedge. You hedge against future volatility by creating certainty today, by advanced deposits. So, economic solidity. So, yung term na hedging, all right? Which now, international relations theory is also using. Yung idea na hedging, for instance. Uh, we engage China, but we hedge tayo by still maintaining strong relations with the U.S. Kasi para may dapat may insurance policy ka. There should be some certainty behind you so that you can make some risky move, right? Hedging po ang tawag dyan. Now, anyway, we have to discuss that more because it's very complicated. In fact, I have this book. It's a fantastic book. It's all about the oil sector and petrochemicals and the role in the 20th century. Nasaan yun? Medyo makapal na book yun. It's like 800 na yun. Pwede just... Yeah, we will uh, discuss that. As in, you'll go all the way back to Rockefeller. Kilala niyo yung mga Rockefeller, di ba? Saan sila galing? Yung octopus siya dati na paano nagsimula si Rockefeller dominating the oil industry. I have the book here. In fact, there are two books by this guy. Brilliant, brilliant. We can discuss. So, nung estudyante ako, binabasa ko yung mga libro na yan. Yeah, it must be there. Sorry, I'll, I'll try to find it. It's it's in the ano ah, it's complicated. Meron pang futures market by the way. Uh, so di ba inexplain ko sa inyo yung yung pwedeng bumili ng kota ganun etc. Guess what? That's actually also happening internationally. Uh yung tinatawag na futures oil market. People already buying uh advanced buying uh, advanced mag-isip, yung mga advanced mag-isip. Bumibili ka ng supply. So actually one big problem today and I explain to you this. I'm I'm not sure you guys are very aware of it. So some countries, especially in Africa, their problem is not only high prices, their problem is hindi sila nakapag-access 
to oil and basic uh, resources at all because yung mga mas mayayaman na bansa, katulad natin sa Asia, right, or let's say Latin America, nag advance pay na sila for oil from, I don't know, Russia, I don't know, Middle East, etc. So, you, kung mga bago pa bumili itong mga African uh, refineries or African uh, companies na buyers, naunaan na sila ng kabila. Because people are so worried about the price volatility, a lot of refineries companies here in the Asia, Philippines, whatever, nag advance payment na sila. So, kawawa itong mga Africans dahil wala silang uh, huge capacity for refining. So, limited lang pwede nila bilhin ngayon or uh, it storage ngayon. And limited din yung money nila. So, hindi sila pwede bumili ng maraming uh, uh, oil for the last six, year, six months or whatever. Naunaan sila ng mga mas mayayaman na bansa sa Asia, Latin America, etc. Or Europe for that matter, right? And then, nagkaroon pa tong complication from Russia, sanctions, etc. So, it's actually complicated, guys. Ha? Hindi, hindi basta-basta to. Kasi there are many layers to that. There's international production. There's futures market. There's the Brent crude oil. There are two major stock markets on that. There's also the aspect of our domestic oil refineries and companies. There's a deregulation, oil deregulation law. Malaking bagay yan. Nag-work ako sa Kongreso as a legislature natin. I've worked with uh, a number of different legislature, uh, legislators throughout the years. Uh, one issue was also the deregulation issue. No? So, there are many layers to that. So, we have to discuss all those layers. So, ayaw kong gawin marites lang yung discussion natin or toilets lang. It's a really serious discussion. So, I have to bring out that book. Uh, it's it's brilliant book because it talks about the emergence of first major oil companies and then how the market changed, the regulation, etc. Now, obviously, guys, we're in the middle of massive transformation in the energy markets because of the development of electric uh, energy, and you know all sorts of alternative energy and who knows what else yung mga, uh, fusion uh, nuclear fusion mga ganun. so let's see let's see now before that let me go back to the more humble issue but i think a very crucial issue ng uh <clears throat> ng ng uh ayan na sabaw na ako eh. sorry pagod talaga ako eh. it's been a long day tas nagmaritas pa tayo na agriculture no now obviously kahapon pinag-usapan natin uh, yung decision ng ating parating na Pangulo na Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to also take over the Department of Agriculture. Now, I understand. I see comments. Marami na comment dyan na, ano naman yan? Anong alam niya? Or, eh, dapat sana, di Kiko Pangilinan na lang. Eh, di ba? Yun ang issue niya. Or, di sana naglagay salaga sila ng isang tao na expert, etc., etc. Now, you're gonna see this interview soon. Uh, interview ko with Secretary Balisakan. Uh, Secretary Arsene Balisakan actually comes from Ilocos North, eh. Uh, anak siya ng magsasaka. So, he has a background in farming, etc. And, and he was a first an agricultural economist before he became a development economist. nag siya sa Mariano Marcos uh, State University sa Ilocos Norte, which is a very good school. And then, nag-UP siya, etc., etc. And he became the great guy he's today. Now, of course, we touched on the issue of agriculture. And I asked him point blank, uh, Secretary, ano nangyari sa agricultural sector natin? Meron tayong International Rice Research Institute dyan sa UP Los Baños. Uh, we have the best weather, uh, we have the weather conditions and the climate for multiple harvest a year. Um, like for instance, there are, um, there, are rice, uh, uh, there are rice cultivation in other parts of the world, including the Caspian Sea region, major papuntang Russia, etc. That's where my uh, dad's ancestors come from. But once a year lang pwede sila mag yield. Uh, but dito sa Pilipinas, kaya natin ng three times, four times, ayun, ayun. Like we have all the advantages. So talagang para sa akin, nakaka... Bahala, nakaka-irita, na dependent tayo sa imports lang sa Vietnam, Thailand. At alam niya naman kwento, alam mo nung sa UP kami, lalo pag mga economics professors namin, parating sinasabi sa atin, alam mo ba, nung 50s, 60s, ang mga taga-Vietnam, Thailand pumunta dito sa atin, nag sa UP Los Baños, sa, yun, sa International Rice uh, Research Institute, which is, in the, I think, the 50 leading research institutes on earth. So there was a there was a survey of leading think tanks and institutions in the world. Ajan yung Academy of US American Academy of Science, and jan yung biggest think tanks. And don yung Philippine Research, Rice Research Institute, ha? talagang sa top hundred in the world. Next level yon. So ang idea is like we already have the brain power. We are doing all of we did all of this research about how to modify, you know, genetic modification, all other things that we can make the rice more resilient, the rice more productive, etc. We also were part of the Green Revolution in the 60s, for instance, to mulong yung Ford Foundation, mga international partners natin, uh, to create more uh, food productivity. We had, and then, like, and then now, we're the biggest importers of rice. 
I mean, hindi ko talaga maintindihan yan. I mean, naintindihan ko intellectually, but hindi ko naintindihan dito sa law. Parang weird. Kasi alam mo, pag pumunta ako sa ibang bansa, sabi natin, gitnang silangan, Europa, etc. Then you say Philippines. So, of course, hindi na ako. Philippines, Vietnam, similar, ganun. So, uh, oh, rice, di ba? Si, ano mo yan? <laughs> di ba si Jokoy? Yung, ano, yung comedian na Filipino? Di ba yung tatay niya parang Canadian ba? Or basta puti yung tatay niya, di ba? Tapos parang tinanong tatay daw. Ito, kinawa ko sa cousin ko yan. Hindi ko napanood yung joke, yung ano niya. Kasi dama kong mga kasama, fan na fan nila si Jokoy. Parang sabi niya, ba't ka, ba't ka nag-asawa ng Filipina? Why did you marry Filipina? I like rice, eh. Parang sabi niya, ganun ang sagot niya, right? So, talagang, talagang rice is in our blood, right? Ang sarap talagang rice. Kaya, kaya siyempre, tingin talaga sa atin, eh, eh, rice country, rice producing country, perfect climate, yung mga, alam mo yung mga manansala paintings pa yan, all of this beautiful, yung bukid, di ba? Yung mga ganun. And I love bukid. You know, and whenever I go, I pass through bukid, etc., papuntang Baguio, di ba dun sa Rosario area, ba may mga bukid na mga ganda, gustang, ganda-ganda ako. I mean, if I were an artist, I would have painted on that. Tapos yung mami ko nga, sabi naman, anak, magbukid ka na lang pag stress, na stress ka sa mga, ano, sa mga trolls mo, mga ganun. Yeah, doon nga na magbukit ka na lang. Anyways, so nakikita niya, relax talaga ako sa bukit eh. Oo. Uh, by the way, thank you sa ano, mga kaibigan natin dyan, mga Ilocano friends natin na tumulong sa atin kumuha ng shirt na yan na medyo magandang presyo. Uh, sabi ko lang, ay, taga-baga. Eh, kasi may ano, may isang mambaling aras na. Yan, yeah, yeah, okay na. Yan, okay. Saan na tayo? Ayan na naman tayo. Hindi na, okay, I mean, hindi na ito Aristotelian Socratic. Ang tawag dyan, sa bog. Alright, balikan natin itong... No, so I'm telling you, itong issue ng agriculture, pinabayaan talaga yan eh. Pinabayaan talaga itong issue na ito eh. Now, on, on the one hand, hindi ka naman ako, hindi benta sa akin yung argument na upan ni Marcos, ganyan-ganyan. Like, we benefited a lot from the Green Revolution, which is not the Marcos thing. Even yung Nutriban, alam natin yan, hindi naman Marcos talaga yan, okay? Or hindi niyo alam, di ba? <laughs> I-research niyo yan saan gaya yung Nutriban. But in fairness naman, nung panahon ni... Dating presidente, uh, nagkaroon naman ng efforts to improve our irrigation sector, including uh, improve the financing, etc., uh, agricultural sector. So a lot of irrigation infrastructure we have today is actually inherited from, from back then. Now, so going back to Secretary Balisak, and one of the things we discussed is this, because one of the biggest, I would argue, the biggest misconception in development discussions nowadays, or at least in the past two or three decades, is that you can become a developed country if you focus on knowledge-based economy. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, actually, in the surface. But you have to keep in mind, hindi ka pwede biglang mag knowledge-based economy or high-end uh, industrialized economy. A lot of our very successful neighbors, practically all of the successful neighbors we have had, they first went through the phase of creating solid, robust agricultural sector. There's a policy side to it, but there's also a politics side to it. And dito papasok yung decision ni Marcos to be the uh, Department of Agriculture Secretary, right? Policy side, sa so policy side, guys, oh, tama, rice is life, Luisa, tama yan. I mean, isang dahilan na hindi ko ma-regain yung six-pack, seven-pack, kasi hindi nag pack six-pack, eight-pack, seven-pack abs natin is because I cannot give up on rice talaga eh. Nahirapan talaga ako. Back in the day kasi talagang, syempre, nung 20s ka, madali kong mga ng abs. Ngayon, medyo zaddy na ako. So, that's like, sige, kahit flat tummy, pwede na. Rice kasi, eh, hindi ko talaga mga, I cannot, you know, I tried keto, I lost 10 kilos. This is 2019, early 2020, before pandemic. I lost 10 kilos. I did no rice for 3 weeks. Nababaliw na ako, guys. Yung parang kulang ng vitamins sa katawan ko. Yung parang, Hindi ako inspired sa buhay. And, and thank Lord, I mean, I had good nice bread sometimes. I had good pasta. And some would say that's even unhealthier. Pero yung, yung, yung taba sa chami sa baba, yung talagang not good for abs. Talagang rice talaga yan. I mean, natin yan, alright? Unless you really get this high level basmati and all. Um, anyway, rice is life. Balikan natin to. So, if, if you look at it, so policy side, a lot of our successful neighbors, right, they first got the agricultural sector question right. Because, first of all, nung mahirap kang bansa, anong marami sa mahirap na bansa? Aside sa mga mahi- marami mahirap, right? Marami kang mga tinatawag na, oh, isa at maya, huwag kayong mag-PC sa akin. In, in economics, the term is semi-skilled or unskilled workers. So if you go to very poor countries, dahil medyo mababa yung antas na education, the training institutions aren't there, 
most people are not trained to do high level, I mean, to do, I don't know, tech industry, call center, whatever, right? Na American accent. Ano, sino yung vlog, sino yung vlogger niya sa TikTok yung ginagaya niya accent ng iba-ibang bansa? Ah, sa kanya galing Marites, di ba? Sino yun? In fairness, magaling siya mang gaya. Pero kaya ko rin niya. Yung mga, uh, eh, ginigaya niya eh, Le Fonse, and then yung Italian, Italian. Yeah. Anyway, going back, I mean, not many people can do that. Yung ganda, kuha mo yung accent. I mean, I had friends uh, who work in French call center dito sa Pilipinas, and they had Parisian accent, like much better than most of the French that we see na galing sa Marseille, Nice, whatever. Mga provinsyano ng France na hindi Parisian accent. But anyway, going back, most people don't have those kinds of basic skills but when you're still a poor country, right? So, what agricultural sector provides is an opportunity for large-scale, almost, almost, up employment for your population. Because to be a farmer, you don't need to have a PhD or engineering degree, etc. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying farming is easy. It's a very, very difficult and risky manual job. But as I said, hindi mo kailangan ng engineering school background or a postdoctoral degree or even university degree. So it's a very high, uh, high uh, labor-intensive job, but human capital-wise, it's not very intensive, right? So, uh, in a sense, uh, in training, etc. So, what agriculture provides is an opportunity for you to have a lot of people employed right away. But that's just the first step. The second step is when more and more people have an opportunity to have a livelihood, right? And this, uh, by the way, let me be, go to also, uh, India ho. You can see in my hands, hindi ako magsasaka or something like that, right? Although, I do have, ano term dyan? Parang green hands na when you plant something, it goes, ano? Yeah, like bata pa lang ako, I would plant like beans in our soil sa little garden namin, sa bahay namin. Next thing you know, biglang may, ano na, ano yung, ano yung beans, ano yung, yung story na Jack and the Beans ba yan? Ayan, biglang ganun, okay, whatever. No, but, uh, but you see, if you are familiar with basics of farming, you know that actually the most efficient farming is what uh, you, uh, it's household farming. Because household farming is like having your own, I don't know, aquarium or having your own little greenhouse, etc. Because in household farming, a farmer who is extremely familiar with the soil and is emotionally attached to the soil because land ko ito, buhay ko ito, they can, can make the most out of that limited lot. So let's say, Kalating hectare, or even a quarter of hectare, meron ka. And if the soil is good, love na love mo yung soil. Yeah, green thumb. Yeah, exactly. Love na love mo yung so uh, soil, yung, yung land and all. What happens is that you're so familiar with it because you're putting, remember the term we, we use, guys, meraki, the Greek term, soul work. Because you're doing soul work, you know that this soil. Hindi lang pwede sayote ilagay, pwede magkamote, pwede magtomato. Pwede. So, yung ganyan gardening style na farming. So, you can have maximum productivity in a very limited space. right? This is one thing you learn about agriculture. That actually, household agriculture is much more efficient than yung large-scale plantation na monocrop lang. Because the monocrop, you're just using like one dimension of the soil. But if you do small-scale, parang boutique-style, connoisseur-style, ut style, you can make three times more productivity out of it. So actually, yung, the misconception is that large-scale plantations are more efficient using the soil, but actually the, the reality is that household uh, farming is even way, way more efficient because you're, each farmer is super familiar and emotionally attached to the soil and to the land, right? Uh, which is very different from the case with plantations. Like, and not to mention the corrosive impact that industrial agriculture has on the soil. Uh, yung destruction of soil is a big, big problem. Sina Satya Guru ba yan? Yung, yung sikat na Indian na Guru Guru, di ba? Ano niya yan? Uh, it's his uh, uh, advocacy. Panawarin niyo yung interview niya with Joe Rogan. Si Satya, Satya Guru? Parang ganyan. Yung, yung name niya, di ba? Ang ganda. Ang ganda ng explanation dun sa soil issue. I had no idea about it. So anyways, I, I just like, I randomly like absorb all of this information because I have to put them together to understand what's going on dito sa agriculture sector natin. But, so, so the second is that you create more productivity per hectare if you have household farming. And then at the same time, more semi-skilled, unskilled people also will have jobs because you don't, have, you don't need PhDs, masters, gra uh, university graduation to be a farmer. Although it's a very difficult job, very risky job. The third thing, and this is interesting, so as you develop your household farming, more and more people have proper household. 
you create a domestic market, right? A local market. There's a provincia on the outskirts of the city. So you create an exchange economy. And this exchange economy has a multiplier effect. It creates its own secondary jobs. People who work in the market, people who deliver the services, middlemen, people who pack it and bring it to the cities. So you're creating a labor market out of, as a derivative of, alam niyo naman derivative, di ba? Medyo, hindi naman derivative dun sa calculus, but just derivative meaning yung secondary effect, yeah. But then we go to the fourth level, and this is interesting because when I talked to uh, uh, Secretary Balisakan, you know, he was talking about everything, but I had to inject, it, inject that because the fourth thing is very important. Now, some of you guys may be old enough or some of you guys uh, may have research enough to know that 30, 40 years ago, when you say Taiwanese product, they'll, they'll say it's a joke. When you say Korean car, they'll say it's a joke. Remember in Kia, yung first Kia, yung Kia Pride na car? Let's be honest. I mean, sentimentally, I like it, but it's not a, it's not a work of beauty, right? I always like Peugeot 206, for instance, way more than Kia Pride. Lang yung harap niya is, I don't know, Ford, likod niya is Volvo. You know, like, Korean cars used to be very ugly. Taiwanese products used to be really bad, like 40, 50 years ago, whatever, right? So it took some time. So, gets nyo, gets, so guess who was buying these ugly products for nung kakalabas lang mga product na yan? Guess who was buying them? The people in those countries were buying their own products. And guess who were the first customers of, let's say, the first Kawasaki motorcycle? First, I don't know, ugly Kia, Hyundai, I don't know, motorcycle. Or first, uh, think about Panasonic na refrigerator. Nung hindi pa sila global class. Mga farmers, mga tito ng work siya. So the other thing that the farming sector creates is creates also markets for low-end infant industries production. So you're going to help also develop your own internal uh, market. Because, uh, you know, I mean, at the, yung Hyundai LG ngayon, social na sila, di ba? They're down the industry standard. But they were, they were not there 40, 50 years ago. And no Filipino would want to buy a Korean car or something like that back in the day. The same way, 10 years ago, no one wanted to buy a Chinese car. Now, ang gaganda ng Geely. Like, Every time you see that Geely car, di ba parang Range Rover? It's really nice. It's really, really nice. Like, ang, ang laki ng improvement in China. But 10 years ago, you say China car. Eh, China car, exactly. China car. But we in China car, right? So China also started with ugly cars. And then now they're getting there, right? And so on and so forth. But the other thing also that it does is that it also creates food security. Because if your domestic uh, agricultural capacity is high, you can produce food for the manufacturing sectors and infant industries in the urban areas, right? So, kaysa mag-import ka, kasi limitada naman ang pera ng bayan mo, kasi mahirap ka pang bansa, third world ka pa, developing country. So, instead of paying another country to get rice, no, you pay your own farmers to get rice, the farmers sell you, see the circulation, the farmers sell you the food, you have your own food, so capital doesn't go out, and then the farmers earns money from that, now they have money to buy your ugly motorcycles, and in the process, both go up slowly and slowly and slowly, right? Now, over time, na kakaran na asymmetries kasi na na pagiwana na agricultural sector, etc. But the point is, they have to work together. The agricultural sector, industrial sector, they have to work together and move up. That's what exactly happened in Taiwan, in Korea, in Japan, etc. Uh, in Thailand, to a certain degree. So very related, yan, no? So yan ang, yan ang mga secondary effects, local market effects. There's so many economic effects that are, are not appreciated by people because Ay, agriculture parang yan, old, medieval yan, dapat lahat industry and all. No. But if you have a robust in, in, internal agricultural sector, then you can do all of these things I mentioned. Especially when you're moving up the ladder of industrialization and manufacturing uh, power. Now, there are two serious political issues here. And that's where kailangan na may political will. Alright, okay. Now, now I'm going to use the word political will. Because ang ayoko yung political will na sinasabi na parang bara-bara puso, parang gilas puso. That was my strategy ka. So I already discussed with the strategy part. Uh, of course, there's more to it. There's a monetary repression analysis. There's an industrial and trade policy analysis. It's too complicated. I'm not going to bring it into the class. So I really simplified it to you guys, classroom. How is the, why the agriculture sector is very important when you're moving up the ladder of manufacturing development. Like totally, I have no notes. So this comes from my heart. So like totally, these were based on analysis, etc. Reading all those years. Now, now, there are two major problems when it comes to the agricultural sector, especially in the Philippines. One is mga middleman. 
Oh my goodness. Diyan nakakaroon ng maraming problema. Maraming mga cartel style na intermediaries na kinakawawa itong mga farmers, binibili ng sobrang mura, well below market prices, and then they hoard it or they sell it at market price or with huge profit margins. So there's so many people that are getting rich by essentially squeezing the farmers out of their hard work, right? And, dahil, and, and you know, some of the countries, the situation is sobrang bad, like India, for instance. A lot of farmers to take their lives because uh, they cannot sell at good price. Lugi pa sila, tapos utang pa sila, tapos, tapos, and they're, they're stuck in that cycle. It's, it's just really tragic. Kaya in India last year, there was this massive protest of these farmers. They went all the way to New Delhi. They occupied the outskirts of New Delhi. And eventually, they convinced Modi, very tough guy, to reverse one of his, some of his big decisions on the agricultural sector. Now, we're not going to go into the details of that. But again, going back to this, yung middleman, ang dami doon, talagang mafia style, guys. Kawawang kawaw yung mga magsasaka natin. Imagine mo, this guy takes all the risks, all the stress, all the costs. Fertilizer price goes up, uh, tractor, field goes And then the, the, the middleman comes here, he buys it half of the market price or worse, then he, he pockets 67% profit later. I mean, like, it's crazy. And then meron pang iba, cartel style, he hoard pa. Kung alam nila sa international market, my uh, volatility and so, yung, siguro hindi tayo makapag-import sa Vietnam, Thailand because of this reason, that reason, may bagyo, may drought, whatever. They'll hoard it, then push up the prices even more. Guys, that has nothing to do with technocratic intelligence. That is pardagulan. That is abuso. That's mafia work. Something has to be done about that. But the even more important one there, right? Even more important one there. So there, uh, there, uh, there's a second one there. By the way, of course, given that yung issue ng subsidies, but, I'll connect it here, don't worry. But the second and more important political issue here, guys, and talaga pag nag Zelensky style ka, ma-feel ma- ma- mo yung passion ng moment. Eh. Is ano guys? Ano? Okay. Land reform. The Philippines has had one of the longest running, most unsuccessful land reform programs on earth. And we exactly know what's the problem. Because even on paper, if makaroon ka ng land reform, but if you're not gonna help the farmers to stand on their own and have the capacity to survive, not to mention protect yung mga farmers from land grabbers, from bullying and militia, your land reform is a joke. And we have so many farmers, I don't know, yung hacienda gina noon, binigay sa farmers, wala namang support system, they had to sell it back to the haciendero. And sometimes it's even worse than that. Now, Secretary Balisakan also discussed this issue of title, land title, ang gulo yung issue ng land title. So sometimes, even if they want to sell it back, the land title is so fuzzy and problematic, practically no one can touch it, right? Because if you have proper property market laws and regulation, you can uh, sell, let's say, this plot of land to someone who's not doing as well here but as a capital to buy somewhere there to, to obviate the impact of low productivity here by high productivity there. So you create also this mark, land market, even among farmers or the more well-off farmers and the businessmen, etc. Like, so my land title problem, but let's be honest, we know what's going on here. The elite in this country, a lot of them come from landed elite background throughout the decades. And a lot of them don't want to give up those lands. So some became congressmen, some became whatever, right? So ginambo mambo nila, binaboy nila itong land reform program natin. So, and this again, guys, is a political issue. It is not a technocratic issue. Now, am I saying that President Marcos is going to fix it? No, I'm not saying that. I, let's see. Let's, I support him 100% if he's going to do that. But my point is, the agricultural sector is not the question of just putting some farmer expert guide there, whatever. No, you need really someone to have the political will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, also the policy analysis to really make sure this land reform issue gets properly implemented. At saka protectan yung ating farmers dito sa mga predatory intermediaries at mga cartel style, mafioso style na intermediaries. That is where you need strong political leadership. So as weird as it may look, like a president, the, the uh, Department of Agriculture Secretary, well, well, if you're going to do, sir, you're going to do your job well, you're really going to go after those oligarchs, those landed elite, those kalokohan, and then you pressure people, ayusin yung land title issue, protectan yung farmers, and bring down the prices of bigas dito sa Pilipinas and farms goods because, right, we have domestic production at a higher level, then boom, we can do it. Otherwise, 
We are at the mercy of two cartels, international cartels of rice exporters and domestic cartels of intermediaries. And kawawa ang taong bayan. Kawawa ang taong bayan. Kawawa tayong lahat. Alright? Um, alam nyo, I mean, ayoko maglaglag ng tao, but I've known friend, people very close to me na nagpumila sa NFA rice. Right? Nung sobrang mahal ng rice, uh, when was this? Five years ago? Di ba? Nung sobrang mahal ng rice. Na ang mga meme na mga nagre-rice lang. May, um, parang meron siyang chicken and everything, pero wala siyang pang rice. Yung mga, no, I mean, I know people who lined up for NFA rice. At ang haba ng pila, guys. Ang haba ng pila. Ang haba talaga ng pila ng NFA rice. So it's, it's sobrang limit. I mean, grave talaga, guys. It's just, it's like, it's like you're living next to a spring water mountain and then you have no water and you have to import it from a desert country. I mean, it's just mind-boggling. Bakit tayo nag-import ng rice? Bakit tayo isa sa pinakamalaking bansa nag-import ng rice? Why are our farmers so marginalized and oppressed? Why do we have one of the oldest, if not the oldest farmers in the world? Bakit maraming mga kabataan na eh, hindi sila na-inspire na pumasok sa farming sector? Like, and, and of course, if you fix the farming sector issue, you also deal with poverty elevation. A lot of our poverty is concentrated dito sa ating mga agricultural sector. Aside from all of those benefits I talked about, if you have a strong agriculture sector, you deal with food security, you create, uh, uh, you create uh, uh, system support, food system support for your infant industries, you create the primary markets or initial markets for infant industries, you make sure the capital doesn't go out, stays in the country, circulates, all the multiplying effect. House, but you see, if you don't have proper land reform and you don't deal with the issue of mga cartel na yan, Bali, wala rin kung anong, kung anong technocrat ang ilalagay mo dyan. Eh. Because let's be honest, we already have the policy blueprint. Eh. What we lack here, yes, political will, na banggain yung mga iba dyan na nagbe-benefit sa status quo. And it's, it really shows the Philippines has a weak state. We have a really weak state. Because we are one of the longest running and most inefficient and un, you know, unjustifiable situations when it comes to our land reform. It's just crazy. It's insane. And kawawa talaga maraming Pilipino. Kawawa tayong lahat dahil ang mahal ng uh, presyo ng bilhin minsan, especially agricultural products. Mamaya na ako pupunta doon sa isa. Alam niyo kung sino pwede ko i-mention, di ba? Uh, at kawawa, lalong kawawa yung mga farmers natin. I hope we don't go, we don't go dito sa sitwasyon ng katulad ng yara sa India na talagang desperado sila. But you know what? Kung ikaw po ay anak ng magsasaka, ngayon nag sa Manila at nag-stumble by ka, stumble ka dito sa uh, whatever vlog natin, please also read what they did in India because they organized from far-flung provinces. They came in droves, hundreds of thousands, I don't know, million. They went to New Delhi and they demanded for their rights until even Modi had to relent. No? Now, in fairness, only President Marcos at least is showing, at least so far, some appreciation of the crisis on the ground, a dilemma on the ground. Eh, hindi naman natin pinansin eh. Kasi tayo dito sa Manila, gano'n, niyabang natin. Hindi natin alam yung kal- ka- kalagaan ng farmer sec- farming sector, sa agriculture sector. Wala lang tayo dyan. But actually, it's extremely important to our national interest and poverty elevation and long-term economic development. But I- I'm just saying, you need also the farmer sectors and all to organize, to be very organized and really fight for their rights, right? But at the same time, fr- so dapat may bottom-up, grassroots, but also top-bottom. You have to have a president and agriculture secretary who's willing to push the right buttons, guys, and push the envelope. Dahil kawawa tayong lahat at skandaloso itong sitwasyon ng ating bansa na biggest importer of rice. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is crazy. All right. I'll stop it there. I can, I'll discuss more about this because tomorrow and other times, God willing, if you have time and energy, I'll also discuss more the oil sector, other energy sectors. Balikan natin yan. And as I said, don't worry about it. Yung mga team replay, yung mga team whatever, uh, na hindi live or... Of course, there's so much I can discuss. We can have, I mean, there, there's whole class. I mean, course, I mean, people are special, they specialize in agricultural economics. So let's not pretend we're experts in agricultural economics. But at least we have to have a proper overall understanding of bakit napakamalagay natin ang agricultural sector. And even the World Bank and Asian Development Bank, they back up this kind of argument that used to be quite unpopular because there were these ignoramos who said, no, 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 we have to move into industries, to high-end services, but ah, dyan tayo ka problema. We move into services sector, but the services sector are not creating the kind of inclusive development we need. Kaya nga yung Pilipinas, kahit 6%, 7% growth, yung poverty elevation natin, hindi pa rin ganun kaganda eh. Kasi yung mga sector na nag-grow, mga real estate sector, mall sector, mga ganun. Tapos yung pera lahat pumupunta sa mayayaman, hindi naman pumupunta sa atin mga taong bayan eh. Ayan tayo eh. 
Kaya kailangan ayusin yung industriya natin, agricultural sector, those two are key. We are too focused on our services sector. But really, and our, you know, no problem if you're high-end services. So if you look at the GDP of Japan, it's very high service-oriented. But they're already at high level because na perfect nila halos yung basics, yung agriculture industry. Eh tayo, hindi pa nga tayo nandito, nag-services na tayo, tapos napaka-low quality pa yung services sector natin. Speculative, exclusive, and real estate sector, etc. Yan, dominated yan ng mga few oligarchs and conglomerates, etc. So let's just be very honest about it. And yes, hindi ko rin na-mention, land grabbers. Huwag na tayo magpangalan para alam natin sinong pinag-usapan dito. Yung dami mga land grabbing dyan, right? Grabe. So you need talaga the Department of Agriculture to step in and protect dun sa mga magsasaka natin ng mga others. Alright. So now I hope you understand where I'm coming from with this whole argument on farm, etc., etc. Again, as I said, wala akong crystal ball. Hindi naman ako madamaurin. So I'm not gonna tell you no, President Marcos will be successful. But at least he recognizes this is a problem. And you know what? I'd rather have President Marcos focus on these issues than... Focus on bara-bara, mindless drug war na wala naman... Ay, nako. Sana, kaya nga, para hindi masayang naman yung majority support. Mapunta naman sa tamang uh, lugar, diba? In fairness naman, development ang priority ng incoming administration at least in its first year. Alright. Okay. Ito na ba tayo dyan, guys? Dal-dal natin, no? Grabe. Parang lalo akong... Parang pang, nung pagod ako, lalo ako nag-overcompensate, right? Ay, na, ubus na naman. Ubus lawin na naman tayo. Alright, may mga tanong kayo dyan. Let me say thank you sa mga kamenet natin. Thank you sa mga friends natin. Mga, my mites from Australia. A while ago, we had our friends from Australian National University. My mites. Mga kameta. Mites natin from New Zealand. Our Kiwi, friend, Kiwi friends. Our friends from California. From, uh, from Malaysia. From Hong Kong. From uh, Canada. Alberta. From Vancouver. Toronto. Quezon City. San Juan. Marikina. Iloilo. Uh, Mindanao. Yan, maraming tayong friends dyan from Europe. You know, you know. Ito pa nga, hindi ko pa nga mention yan. May international dimensions, yung Europe at US, madayang mga yun eh. Sinesubsidize sila yung agriculture sector nila. Tayo, kawawang farmers natin, paano tayo mag-compete sa kanila. Madaya kaya yung mga bansa na yan, yung mga yaman na bansa. They subsidize their agricultural sector. Yung isang kalabaw lang yata sa Europe, like how many thousands of dollars yung subsidy sa kanya per year. Madaya talaga eh. Paano tayo mag-compete niya kung ganun style? Yung Vietnam, Thailand, may support din yan eh. Paano tayo mag-compete eh? Yung rice nila, ginagamit pa yung Philippine technology, tapos may government support, sa in-export pa sa atin. Ang tawag dyan, niluluto sa sariling mantika or pinapakain ng sariling bigas. Yan ang ginagawa sa atin ng mga ibang bansa. Mali talaga yan eh. Kaya kailangan ng sapat na leadership. Tamang leadership. And talaga kailangan i-prioritize talaga tong issue na to eh. Surprise nga ako na parang hindi pinapansin masyado, masyado to throughout the years eh. Right? In fairness, Secretary Balisakan and Common President Marcos at least have highlighted these issues. Whether they'll be successful in dealing with it, we can discuss that later on. But at least na-highlight tong issue na to eh. And this is so, so, so important, guys. So, so important. You can see it. Pinag-aralan natin, not as an expert, but, you know, in my own capacity, I've tried to understand the importance of this issue. Alright? So tomorrow, we'll discuss also Russia, Ukraine, oil, uh, grain production, yung mga factors na yan, stagflation, Phillips Curve. Alright? Unless may update na naman dito sa Duterte Youth and yung mga ganun, even Mentiel, before we go. So, you see, I did a long jury analysis of uh, how some of our neighbors uh, were able to go from a very poor country to uh, become a very rich country. Uh, rich uh, country. Uh, all right? Uh, uh, so, we started uh, with uh, even Mentiel. Uh, so, we, we kind of do that, right? But don't worry. <laughs> we will get there, all right? Yeah, South Korea, friends natin, Jan, Kansamida, Kansamida, thank you very much. Friends natin from Japan, Tomarigato, Ayagazaidamase, thank you very much. My friends natin from Espana, Latin America, muchas gracias. Danke schon, so my friends natin from Australian, Alemania, Deutschland, pala, sorry, hindi mo Alemania, Espanol. Mga, merci beaucoup, so my friends natin from uh, Le Fonse, okay, uh, th thank you very much uh, for uh, watching us. Uh, Uh, Switzerland too, uh, Geneva, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. All right. Ayan na. Ayan na yung natin. Okay. All right. May tanong ba kayo dyan? Ayan talaga. Hey, Darian Academy talaga tayo today. Ah. Nag-event mentiel, long jury, agricultural policy. Yung mga ganyan. Yan ang yan, yan, Hey, Darian Academy style. Thank you very much kay Mitch Tengcho for your support. Thank you very much sa mga ano natin. Ah. Driver lang ako buong araw. Ngayon, medyo nag-lecture tayo ng konti. Ay, masaya na ako ulit. Uh, may balance tayo, body and mind. Yan. Thank you, John, kay Maris Valenciano. 
Thank you, guys. Jen, Donato, very kind of you for support. Thank you, guys. Matt Logronio. Thank you, Kai Patrice Tandok. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you, Kai Brav Pit. Ayan, si Brav Pit. Yan, no? talagang regular siyan. Kay Rosel Lorenzo. Thank you naman, John. Kay Maria Esmeralda. Ay, kay Picasso pala. Hindi pala sa akin. Oh, thank you daw. Sabi ni Picasso. Picasso, kaya na mag-usap. Ayan. Thank you naman, John. Kay Mar Valenciana. Ayan, sinabi mo na pala kanina. Ayan. Thank you, kay Mitch. Charmelin Castro. Yan, mga galante supporters natin. Thank you very much. So, yan ha, basta yon. Okay, alis na ako. Basta sa farming sector, I'll talk about some books later on. Tungkol dito sa issue ng agricultural sector, bakit napakamahalaga ito sa industrial development, infant industrial development, bakit you need political will to deal with some of the issues, including land reform, because the Philippines has one of the longest running, most inefficient land reform programs in the world. And the problem there is not legal per se or policy technocratic, it's political, right? That's why let's say if Marcus Jr. will do something about it. All right? Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, guys. Talk to you soon.